This is the Hoof GP and this guy's problem is fairly obvious, although actually not quite as obvious as it might seem at first glance. This is the Hoof GP. Just as I was doing that intro, look at Kia, he's investigating the foot. Kia comes along sometimes to work and I love it that he takes such an interest. He's constantly actually telling me what we need to do with the feet, which is awesome. Anyway, this is what the cow's foot actually looks like. So clearly this is the axial hoof. The lateral one should be here, but obviously it's not. Kevin actually, is Kevin here? Say hello, Kevin. Hi. Kevin used to be the dairyman here, so he looked after these cows. And he said, look after this next cow before she came in. He called her Lucky because she lost her entire tail and that claw in the same week. But you can't quite remember. No. Why? It was a while ago. It was quite a long time ago. He thinks it had an infection and normally she gets on all right. But the reason I'm filming it today isn't just because she's got one hoof. It's because she does also have a problem. So anyway, her foot's in the air. Let's get it washed off and get it trimmed. So honestly, Kevin, does this cow walk well normally? Like when you when you worked here, does she walk all right? Yeah, no, she does well, yeah, fine. You see, sometimes you get a real problem with an outside claw and you can remove them. It would be a vet job, obviously. I wouldn't do something like that. But the cows can actually adapt and cope really, really well, which is exactly what this cow's been doing. But as you can see, there's a problem here. Isn't that an ulcer? No, it's dermatitis so she's got an open lesion up there and then it's got bacteria on it which has caused dermatitis but also this claw is actually overgrown now normally when we talk about overgrowth we talk about the balance of the feet and we need to get it 50 50 between the two feet but obviously she doesn't have two feet so why does the overgrowth matter well this is why so you can clearly see this hoof is overgrown it's starting to curl in here that's not the issue if we come to the side here we can see because of this elongation her foot is at the wrong angle and it's causing her to walk on this part of her foot too much. So we need to reduce this angle here, look. If you see this angle here, look, it should be about there, which is about 50 degrees. Right now, it's probably at about 40 degrees. 30 degrees, maybe even. So we need to get the angle steeper so that she's walking on the right part of her foot, and then we'll deal with that problem that is not an ulcer here, okay? Okay. Sometimes I just seem to talk way too much, but cow's feet are not simple and they are one of the most important features on their anatomy. If you have sore feet in any way, walking any distance is an absolute nightmare, never mind if you weighed around half a ton. And sometimes, one or two sentences just doesn't cut it. A basic hoof trim is a fairly simplistic thing, but when it comes to problems, the devil is truly in the detail. So because her hoof is twisting over like this, it looks like I'm not trimming it straight, but actually I'm trimming this perpendicularly to the ground. In other words, this will be flat on the ground and this portion here probably won't touch the ground because it's curling up away from the rest of the hoof. So we've trimmed it back to the right length now and we've got rid of this big massive ridge that was here. Now normally we wouldn't do that even on a cow with two feet, but that would be causing extra friction when she was walking. So now we're going to model it out just like we would do it in a normal cow. Not that she's abnormal, it's just different to the norm. So I suppose she is abnormal, but you know what I mean. Now, I'm modeling this out, obviously, and that's reducing the surface area of her foot. So I'm not gonna model it out as much as I would on a regular hoof. You see, I use the word regular instead of abnormal or normal. So now we've got the foot back to where it pretty much should be, it's time to tackle all that kind of gnarly bit round about here. This is periopal horn, and that's why it's so soft and flexing away from my knife. All it's doing is serving to host bacteria and attract dirt, which is why we need to remove it. Now we need to be really careful when we're doing this because we do not want to break any skin and open up that lesion anymore. As you just saw, my knife is really sharp, but this, because it's soft, flexes out of the way 
and it's actually more difficult to cut. It's like if you held an onion in the air and then tried to slice it, it would be more difficult than slicing it on a chopping board, wouldn't it? Strange analogy, but you know what I mean. So we can clearly see this is where the original hoof must have been detached. They would have cut straight through P2, which is the second bone up from the pedal bone. And they cut straight through there because that is the best way for it to heal. But in this case, the skin hasn't managed to heal, probably because it got infected with digital dermatitis, which hopefully is something we can do something about today. Look at the difference there. Much, much, much tidier. If we compare it to the original, Side by side, you can see the difference in size as well. We've really reduced it. We've tidied everything up round about the lesion and hopefully that'll stop muck getting attracted and stuck in that area, which will also promote healing to the lesion. Now, all that we're gonna do is we're gonna wrap it with a tiny little bit of salicylic acid to try and get that to heal up and keep the dirt out of there and keep the product on so that it can heal. We didn't even use half of a bandage. And then very gently, look, it's not tight at all. Try wrapping something tightly around your arm for 30 seconds and see how sore it gets. Kids, not you, adults, maybe think about it. Anyone else that's not got the common sense to take it off after 30 seconds, please do not do that. But I can assure you it would really hurt, which is why these bandages need to be really loose. And they only need to stay on for a couple of days anyway. So if they fall off after one day or two, it's fine. Now it's not beautiful, it is not fantastic, and it's definitely not going to heal, but it is functional. She's a little bit sore because she's had her foot up there in the air for a little while, and obviously I've been messing around with an open lesion, but I can guarantee you she will feel much, much better very, very soon, and she does walk well on that single digit. Guys, this has been the Hoof GP. We've already trimmed about 45 cows today. Craigie Boy has made us a coffee. Thank you, Craigie Boy. You're always welcome. So we're gonna drink this coffee, Chill out. Isn't that mum's cup? Yes, I have a good cup. What's your point? I think it's mum's. So? She'll get me in trouble. She won't. She will. Ash, don't, don't see this. Anyway, guys, thanks very much for watching this episode of The Hoof GP. Catch you next time. Bye!